So in this video I'm going to show you how to create an Android Wikitude app from scratch. So the first thing we need to do is go and download the development files that we need. And we'll have two options and we're going to go with the JavaScript API just because it has more functionality and makes things a little bit easier. So we just download that and after the downloads we've got the option of creating a developer account. We definitely need it in this case. So go ahead and do that. And when we're creating from scratch, if we look in this folder, there's actually really only one file that we need. And that's inside the example that's provided. And in the libs folder, we can see there the wikitude sdk.aar file. And I'll show you where to put that later. So if you come back and log in with the developer account that you created, essentially with the free developer account that you set up, you can get a trial license and you put that in the app in order to make it work. So let's go to the developer section, down to the bottom there, licenses. And we can see this link here for the Wikitude SDK to download the key. You get a text file and it's a massive long string. And again, I'll show you where to put that into the app later. So let's have a look at this Android documentation. We can see there's a setup guide for Android over here. And we'll just follow this step by step. And I'll just point out where it's slightly outdated now. And we're going to use Android Studio, as that section says. And Android Studio, I think, is fairly easy to set up. Just do a Google search for Android Studio, download the files, follow it through. I think it even stops and tells you when you need to install Java and things like that. So hopefully it's fairly straightforward. So we're creating this new project. We'll just call it Wikitude Test in this case. Go next. I think the current version of the Wikitude SDK requires the Android version 16 is a minimum so we'll just set that here and go next and we'll just create an empty activity and that's fine we'll just finish so it'll generate the files it'll do an initial build all that just let it finish all right so the next step we need then is to add that library file into the libs folder so if we right click on the app and choose to show in Explorer. You can see where all the files are stored. Go into the app. There's the libs folder, and it's empty at the moment. So we go back to those files we downloaded, copy that, paste it in, and that's all of the Wikitude functionality in that file. Okay, so on to the next step. And now we need to modify the build.gradle file to make a connection to that library. So if we expand the Gradle script section, we've got two build.gradles, and it's the module one that we need. And we can tell that because it's already got a dependencies section in there. And we just need to add this middle line here. So we paste that in. Okay, and then also uh, this text that tells about the repository. Okay, that's it. So let's save that. Let's synchronize because it's telling us it wants to. It'll just run through, make sure everything's in order. All right, that looks good. So skip over this bit because we haven't purchased a license yet. And onto the bit where we talk about the permissions and the features that the app needs. We can leave off the bottom line because it's slightly outdated in terms of version and also it's ignored by the Gradle settings anyway. So we can copy that, open our manifest file, and then paste it in just above the application description. Right, that's that. Again, we keep saving as we go along. But there's actually one more thing that we need to do in the manifest, and that's add this bottom line into the description of our application. So we'll copy that. And we've only got our one activity, so we'll just paste that line before the closing diamond bracket. All right, let's save. So this next section talks about setting up Eclipse, which we're not using, because we're using Android Studio. So we just skip over that. All right, this section talks about using JavaScript and so on, but 
I don't need to worry about that at this point. The next thing we need to worry about is this line, which will create the Wikitude Architect view in our layout. So we copy that. The layout and the activity open automatically, but if you ever need to find them, you can find them in the Java folder and the resources folder, in the layout. And recently I've had a few issues with this rendering problem, but you can fix that just by changing the theme. It's just in the preview anyway. Right, we can delete this text. And if we switch to the text view, we're going to paste in that XML to the architect view. And again, we get a rendering problem here just because the preview is not sure how to handle it, but it doesn't cause any other problems. And we can save that. And it's always worth making a note of the ID. That's what we need to connect to it. So, now to put some code in here. So if we scroll down, it gives us these three lines. And this is how we connect to that architect view in the layout that we just added. So we paste those in. And we get some red text. First of all, we need a variable to keep track of the architect view. So the class is architect view. And we'll give it the name that it expects, architect view. Okay, and at the moment it still doesn't understand startup configuration. So what you can do in Android Studio, if you click and hover in the right place, eventually you'll get some uh, box with blue text appear. There we go. And if you press Alt and Enter, it'll handle all of the importing that you need. So here's where the license key goes. Again, it's just a string of text. It's a massive long one, longer than this. It goes right off the edge of the screen. But you have to put that in. If you don't put that in, you'll just get a message saying there's a missing license. Right. So if you actually run the app now, it will crash because there's something else that we need to do. There's a few methods that we need to override. And the first one is for on post create. And it takes the same parameter as a on create. And in each case where we're overriding here, we just call the same method from the superclass. And we call the same method on the architect view. So we're just notifying the architect view of changes of states of the application. So if you run it now, it will run, but you won't see anything. So to kick everything off and make the camera work, we need to override on resume. And again, call the same class in the superclass. And, well, there's a mistake there. Just fix that. There we go. And then again, let the architect view know that there's been a change of state that needs to resume. So now it will run, uh, but when it closes, it will throw an error. And to fix that, we need to override on destroy. So again, this is just to let the architect view know that the application is closing and that it needs to tidy everything up. So call the superclass, call the architect view. All right, so I think those are the three main ones that you need. We may as well, just for completeness, override the on pause method as well. And this is just to notify it if someone takes a phone call when they're using the app or if the app goes to sleep. Just keep things tidy. All right, so now we can run this app. You can click on the play, try it on device. Here we have it here. See the application starts. And the fact that it's a trial license is fairly obvious, but that's all we're expecting to see at this point. So how do we load a augmented reality experience? Well, if we go back to the guide, it tells us here, the best place to do it is on post create and by adding in this line to load the view. 
So let's paste that in. All right, so we get some red on the line in to begin with because it has the potential of throwing an IO exception. So we need to place that inside a try catch block. So you can try and catch the specific error, or if you're lazy like me, you can just catch a generic error or exception. And as it says, it's a URL, so you can just type in a web address if your files are hosted on a server somewhere. But one of the benefits of creating your own app is the ability to load files locally. And to do that, we need an assets folder. So we can create a new folder, assets folder. And if we right click on that, we can show in Explorer, then in assets, that's where we can place our files. So I've downloaded um, all of the samples from the Wikitude GitHub site. So there's lots of examples here. We're just going to use the first one. All right, we'll just paste that in. The name's too long for me. There's too much chance of mistyping it, so I'll shorten that down. And if we look in the assets folder now, we can see the folder and we can see the index file that we need to try and target. So how do we do that? Well, we put in the word file, colon, three forward slashes, Android underscore assets, and that targets that folder. And then we can use a relative path to the file that we need, index.html. That's it. That's the only additional change we need to make. So if we run that app now, Wikitude starts up. We can already see the strip across the top that tells us that the HTML file is loaded. And if we point at our target image, then we have augmented reality in our Wikitude app made from scratch.